Hey, praise God today, family. Listen, I'm so excited to once again have an opportunity to come through your smartphones and come through your TVs and share another word of God with you. I mean, uh, I'm thinking the Gospel Network. I'm thinking uh, Kingdom Purpose. And now our new edition, Now the Now Network, for giving me once again another opportunity uh, to come into your lives and to basically share uh, a word of God today. And oh, it's a word. Amen. It's such a word. I'm so excited to like get it out of my mouth and share it with you in anticipation of what God is going to do as a result. Amen. In this particular season, um, I want wanted to share uh, that I see you guys adding me and following me on like the Facebook and all that great stuff. And uh, I sincerely appreciate it. I hope that these sermons are uh, working in your life like they're working for mine. Amen. Uh, feel free uh, to share with me, uh, you know, any of your testimonies that you might want me to read. Um, you can read, you can share at uh, ministerjking at gmail.com and know that I am never afraid to visit your location or visit your ministry. Uh, if you want me to swing through and visit, amen. Uh, now on to a bit of housekeeping, amen. We always got to do a little something, something, right? Um, if you have perhaps seen the news and you've watched the violence taking place uh, between Israel and the Philistines and, and, um, we traditionally read our Bibles and it instructs us to stand with Israel no matter what. And, and while we do that, I simply ask that we pray for calmer heads, amen, that we pray for cooler heads, that we pray that we can heal and that decisions get made uh, that don't necessarily result in the killing uh, of innocent children and bystanders, amen. Uh, and then we have my brother Kashif, amen, my brother Kashif. My brother that rides for Christ in Pakistan, right? Um, listen, uh, would you ride for Christ in a Muslim-laden country? Uh, you know, where preaching the gospel could get your house and your your uh, your, your temple burned down. Uh, preaching the, the gospel uh, turns your popularity and your posturing for power into something way far out of reach. Would you still be about the word of God? If it wasn't like subtle, low volume uh, uh, kind of a, a, a opposition like it is now, right? They, 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 they're sound, it's kind of subtle, almost passive aggressive how we've kind of turned from God in this country. But what if it's over there and it's dangerous? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I once again ask you to join in the international fight um, uh, to support my brother Kashif. All right, listen, I want, I want to tell you a quick story, uh, you know, something about, about my ministry, the ministry that God has blessed me with uh, for a number of years now. Uh, when I first started, uh, I preached a sermon over on 101 West All Saints Streets. That's Asbury Methodist Church, amen, Asbury Methodist Church. And that was my grandfather's church. Um, and after I had finished preaching uh, and sharing a word, uh, the pastor let the people know that I was launching a ministry soon, and, and it was nearly an hour and a half away, and to simply wish me well. But over the course of weeks, uh, I began to see gifts enter my mailbox, uh, my, my ministry's PayPal. You know, I never asked for these people's money. I never asked for their money, but they saw a person leaving their midst and going into this fallen world to fight the good fight, and they wanted a piece of it. Amen. They wanted to be able to, to know that although they couldn't do what was about to get done, uh, they wanted to be able to say, we are the body of Christ, and we're going to support it. Amen. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't take place in what I was doing, but this little seed here can help you fight. And so, family, I'm not begging for your fortunes. All I'm asking is let a man examine himself. And if you are truly of the body of Christ, I simply bring your attention to a fight that's taking place overseas that I wish really I could actually be a part of physically. Amen. Consider donating. Uh, to our ministry today through whatever prompts the screen provides you or add us on the house of uh, uh, add us on the Facebook at the House of Faith Fred VA and donate whatever little gift you can and I assure you that it will always go towards the fight for Christ. Amen. And I thank you in advance and I thank God in advance for already having his hand on Brother Kashif uh, and his ministry and his temple and the orphanage. Amen. Now 
uh, we can get to our word. We can get to our word, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it, uh, and I, I and I get uh, to our actual word here. We're coming from the from the book uh, of Nehemiah, right? Uh, I am. I gotta I gotta find it here because uh, we got to a certain piece last week. Amen. There it goes. Uh, we're chapter two. Verse 5 is where I think we're going to go today. I'll read it and go into prayer and then we'll get popping, right? Uh, and I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your eyes, hmm, that you send me to Judah, the city of my father's graves, that I may rebuild it. And the king said to me with the queen sitting beside him, how long will you be gone and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. And I said to the king, if it pleased the king, let letters be sent, uh, be given uh, to the governors of the province beyond the river, that they may let me pass until I come to Judah. And a letter to Asheth, the, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me the timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress of the temple and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked for the good hand of my God was upon me. Amen. Amen. Um, I think I'm going to go a little bit more. Then I came to the governors of the province beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent with me officers of the army and the horsemen, but the Sambalit and the Hornonite and the uh, Tobiah and the Amorite servant heard this. It displeased them greatly that someone had come to seek the welfare of the people of Israel. Mm, praise God for his word today. Let's go into prayer, family. Father, I thank you this morning for the word. I thank you for what you're about to do in the lives of all that hear this, Lord. We are so excited about the season of restoration. We're so excited about what you're doing. And we just give you all the praise. We ask you, Lord, our hearts are ready, our minds are ready for whatever it is that you're going to do today, Lord. Allow us simply to be molded into better versions of you. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, that's what I need to do. I need to working on it, right? Working on it. Me and my production team. <laughs> amen. Amen. Uh, so last year, this entire year, uh, we have been uh, standing on the year of restoration. Right. And I, I don't think that I'm leaving it. Amen. Because we're in the summer right now. And if you continue to stand where you are and do nothing, we're going to be in the winter again, the end of the year again. And I just don't want that for anyone. Amen. This is the year where God is restoring us and we must be watchful and diligent about our moves and the way we work towards rebuilding. Amen. And yes, it will take some work, y'all. It's going to take some work. God doesn't give it to us on a silver platter. There are some things that involve us, amen, and it may even take us to the brink of craziness. But in the end, in the end, you will have your restoration, amen. And so now uh, to recap, amen, uh, the book of Nehemiah, if you missed the previous uh, sermons, no fear, I'll catch you up. Uh, always jump on to us at Facebook Fred VA and uh, simply uh, House of Faith. Fred VA, <laughs> and simply uh, check out the previous sermons there, get yourself caught up, but I'll get you. All right. We've been coming from the book of, of Nehemiah, and this is a man who was born into captivity, but he connects with his family that has already left in exile. Uh, I mean, he has a decent job working as the wine bearer to the king and receives news that the walls of Jerusalem are in ruin. Right. And it bothers him and it bothers him so much that the king sees him and his his uh, sorrow and simply says, what do you want? And this is where we left off last week, family. If God were to ask you, uh, truly ask you, what do you want? Could you answer in a manner that included proper thought, proper strategy? Or would you just blurt out the first thing that came to your mind? And should you get it, you wouldn't even manage it properly if it was placed into your lap, amen. 
Because many times that's what we're doing, family. Our, our heart cries so desperately for God to, to do something on your behalf. And, and I ask, what have you done on your own behalf? Amen. Have we considered that if God blessed you with the house, how are you going to pay for it? If he places you into that position that you've been asking for for the last three years, are you educationally and fundamentally prepared to rise to the challenge? And here is where we plug in Nehemiah and his response. There are quite a few things we see. Amen. Nehemiah asked to be sent to the city and rebuild it. Amen. So he is acting within the power of the king. He's asking, if I have found favor in your eyes, and I'm almost taken to the prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, not by my will, but by your will, Lord. See, see, I often wonder how much more powerful would we be if it was truly his will and not our own will driving the boat. Amen. He tells us in his word that I will give you the desires of your heart. Both these desires and these examples that we see are intertwined into God's will. Hello. Is your will tied into God's will? Amen. If I have found favor with you, Lord, and I almost look at it laughing like, like I'm pushing my credibility chips in the table and asking, is there any favor for you, me here, Lord? And many of us know that with our with, with, with uh, God, our credibility is trash, isn't it? I mean, we said we were going to pay you back, Lord, but we never did. How many times did we say, Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise. Lord, if you do this, I promise. And we ain't never get back to the God with that. Amen. We, 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 we never will. We, we said we were loved of people, but we mean and we spiteful. We have our own motives behind the veil. And yet because of Christ, amen, we can push our chips to the table and know that it means something. The blood of Christ means something in the eyes of God. If I have found favor in your eyes, Lord, amen. Let me go and fix this issue. This issue that you place deep inside my heart. Let me, let me lose uh, 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 let me loose to handle this business. Let me turn me loose to handle this business, Lord. And see, the first thing that we see is that the king says, how long are you going to be gone? See, the king values you. He want to know how long you're going to be out to look for. See, see, when you operate mm, in excellence, mm, people may not want to acknowledge your greatness on a daily. They might want to bite their tongue when they see you out there hustling and being a shaker and a mover, but they're going to know when you ain't there, eh, then. That how Would people miss you on your job? What they notice, man, it's been about a week. And I ain't seen him, bro. I've been around here. I don't know what's going on here. Stuff piling up. I don't know where they've been. Uh, uh, here's one. Would they want you back? Would they want you back? I can truly say that just about every position that I've been in in my professional career, I could probably go back to it. And uh, the ones that are still uh, in 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 uh, existence, if I said, "Hey, I, I'd come back," I, they would welcome me back. Amen. Um, would those who deal with you, would they want you back? How about we take away the job? Amen. We insert the church, insert the house, insert any little clubs that you're in, insert the marriage, insert all the people with, that you're connected to at every aspect of their life. And the question is, are you pursuing excellence? Because if you are, somebody is noticing you, amen. It may seem like it's quiet, beloved, but someone is noticing you. And so Nehemiah sets a time to please that pleases the king. He sets a time so that he can get everything approved, right? And he gets the approval. You can go. Excellent. Praise God. I got the approval. Now, here's where we find out what Nehemiah's been doing in his spare time, amen, during these past four months. Here we go. Can I get letters to these folks so that I can get timber? And I'm going to need a place to stay. And, and, and you send me with guards. That sounds great. Can I also get... Can I also get, Lord, can you help me with, Lord, can you get, in other words, he already had a plan. He already had a strategy. God is the greatest strategist, period, amen. And I know that we just want to run down the street and have the strength to do all things through Christ and strength and Hey, right, I get it. But I'm just saying, can we take a minute and be like, how? 
Can we take a minute and just think, okay, how? Can we stop crying about what we want and simply pray, Lord, can you show me how? How can I get to the next level, Lord? Speak to me. Because the walls are damaged. And everything looks completely destroyed. And and why I just want to get out there and start going for it. Somebody got to give me a strategy. I've got to get a strategy. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? I should just cut on some Montel Jordan and be like, this is how we do it. No, 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 no. Because the entire project, amen, is dependent upon the king. Boom. Oh, my. The entire project is dependent upon the king signing off on the orders to go get it. Nehemiah's credit ain't strong enough, but the king, oh, he can move some stuff. Hey, man. Oh, oh, he ain't got to reach in his pocket and try to plaster the plan in himself. No, no. See, God's plan is a strategy that cannot be thwarted by any works of the devil. Amen. Oh, y'all ought to say something today. Amen. This ain't even my plan. Amen. Lord, this is your plan. I'm just here to do my part. Amen. And the Lord granted the king, I'm sorry, granted his request. The king granted his request. Amen. Now, those of you that have been blessed enough to know that you had a request, you had something go up into the atmosphere, you, you had some petitions, you threw yourself on the table, and you knew that God moved in your life to get these things rolling. Give him some praise. Now give him some praise this day and hold on to the fact that God granted this request. And I say, hold on to the fact that God granted this request. God granted this request. God granted this request. Why? Why? Because we're going to cover a little bit more next week, but I'm going to start with the ending verse. It displeased the officials to hear that he had come to tend to the welfare of the Israelites. Mm, so you got to hold on to the fact that the king is with you because everybody ain't going to be. Everybody ain't going to be happy that you in the mix, amen. Everybody wasn't happy when you opened up your little chicken shack and you tried to build it down the street. Oh, they was disturbed. The Bible says disturbed, David. Oh, when you tried to tell them you was going to go for it, they was disturbed. And before I get off, I want to talk for a moment to folks that are disturbed by something they ain't even involved in. <laughs> People being disturbed by actions being taken by somebody else. People being disturbed in your life about your life. Amen. Sitting around talking about you. Oh, do you think she better than that? Oh, you know he be doing this. Oh, you know he be doing that. And I would ask that if we go back to chapter one, up to that point, Nehemiah, there ain't nowhere in there where Nehemiah was disturbed by anything other than what God gave him, amen. Are you allowing things that ain't got nothing to do with your purpose to disturb you, amen? So, so, so if you got time to be disturbed by what someone else is doing, then I begin to wonder, what are you doing with all this time that has been granted? See, see, I can't be disturbed. I say, I can't spend my time being disturbed, amen, because I'm still trying to work out the strategy, amen. I'm still looking for God. I'm still looking for God to give me the way, amen. How am I supposed to be able to do that when I'm spending my time being double-faced, amen? When I'm blessing on one end, but I'm gossiping and cursing on the other, and then the blessing comes and you can't manage it because you didn't spend your time being disturbed rather than preparing for the actual blessing, amen. I'm asking today, is somebody getting ready for the blessing, amen? Have you put down the strife and picked up the strategy, amen? Picked up the strategy, Amen. That God has available for you. Oh, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. And you should too. Amen. As we get ready into the next verses, the next chapter for the next week. Amen. I'm up on it. This is as far as I can get. But praise God. I want you to, to, to have a full view. Amen.
of what restoration means in your life. Praise God. And examine the will, the things that you ask. Is it God given or is it you given? Because you got both. Amen. You got to select what God gave you. Let us go into prayer now and get ready here, right? Amen. What a word. What a word. Go ahead and listen to this thing again because I know I am. Praise God. I'm just talking to y'all, man. I got stuff to do. Amen. <laughs> hey, give us some praise. Let's go to prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. And we seek your will in our lives, Lord. We're just so thankful that you continue to work with us even though we fall short. Even though our credit is poor and destroyed and there is nothing we can do, nothing we can do to bring our credit up to up to be able to have you shine upon us. But it is through the blood of Jesus. We get to be who we are because you are who you are to us. And we just thank you, Lord, for giving us that, Lord. And Lord, all we do is simply ask that we just continue to have an opportunity to get it right, have a chance to get it right, Lord, and that you continue to work with us through this thing we call life. We lift you up, Lord. We magnify you and worship you and all that you are. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, that is it for today, you guys. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in with me. As always, again, you can reach me, House of Faith, Fred VA on Facebook. We are all working on the app. We're working on the app. Listen, I'm so excited to be working on this app and to have an opportunity to interact with you guys on a way more personal level. There's so much great content that I want to share with you guys and I want to be able to have. So uh, until we get that app running, go ahead and add yourself on um, House of Faith, Fred VA, Facebook. I see people coming in. Uh, I see people coming in on my page. Y'all keep adding me personally, J King. There's like a million J Kings. I don't know how you find me, but y'all find me and I'm thankful for that. But <laughs> find yourself on the House of Faith page too. Amen. And uh, we're just going to keep on working and we're just going to keep on spreading this gospel and keep giving me praise. And I look forward to being able to speak to you all again. Have an awesome week until the next time we are able to get together. May you be blessed. May you be uplifted and may you be focused. Time is not for everybody. Time is not our friend. Let's get to work, guys. Let's get after it. It's restoration year.